Coming up on show 704, Tesla's firmware reveals to hackers a range-busting battery pack on the way. Stick around, we'll tell you more. Plus, the Chevrolet Bolt app now makes charging easier. A look inside the new Lotus Evaya production facility, how lithium-ion batteries are developing, getting better and cheaper, and being recycled as well, and a new 7 megawatt charging facility that Porsche opens up, plus many more stories on today's podcast for Friday the 21st of February. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you're listening around the world. Welcome to EV News Daily. I'm Martin Lee, going through every EV story that I can find so you don't have to. And thanks as always to myev.com for helping me make this show. A great feature on their homepage, by the way, is a section of cars, used EVs you can have for under $10,000. There's a, an opportunity to grab yourself a bargain. Check out myev.com. And welcome to a new executive producer as well. Welcome back to the show, Raj Badwell. Thank you very much, Raj. I don't mind if people come and go, and I had a couple of people stop their Patreon support this week. Uh, Darren Sant uh, stopped his support. And, you know, when someone's been supporting for months and months and months, it's just I'm so grateful for people helping make this show. You can check out Patreon at patreon.com slash evnewsdaily. Okay, so kicking off and finding an available public charging station and starting your charging session is now easier for Chevy Bolt's EV owners. GM is making enhancements to Energy Assist. It's a standard feature available to anyone using the My Chevrolet mobile app for Bolt EV owners. See, Energy Assist, first available back in 2017, it's available now and it currently enables Bolt owners to plan and manage their routes locates charging stations on the way, both along their route and in their local area. They can monitor their route, receive real-time alerts if the range predictions change dramatically. Energy Assist is integrated with data from the vehicle, which enables intelligent planning and precise charge time predictions. While GM is now displaying dynamic data from charging networks, EVgo, and charge point, and they're doing that within the Energy Assist section. And information provided by charging networks includes real-time data on charge station uh, status and availability to indicate if someone's using it or whether it's free for you to use. At eligible charging stations, owners using the GM app as well can now link their EVgo account and you can activate and pay for charging sessions right from the My Chevrolet app on your mobile. Ah, the way it should be. Totally eliminates the need to toggle between apps and streamlines the payment process, which can be a faff with EVs, we'll admit it. Eligible charging stations are noted within the My Chevrolet mobile app. Let's talk Tesla next, and Tesla is working on a new 110 kilowatt hour battery pack configuration that can stretch range well beyond 400 miles, according to a new discovery made in Tesla's BMS, the battery management system, in the firmware, says Tesla Arty. You see, Jason Hughes is a notable Tesla owner and a Tesla hacker. Now, he was the first one to uncover the company's plans for the P100D variant four years ago, and he found references to a larger battery pack capacity in the company's latest BMS. MS. There is a pack ID that starts life set to 109 kilowatt hours usable. Now, 109 kilowatt hours usable would be well over 400 miles, maybe even 410 miles for a Tesla Model S, noted Hughes on Twitter, further suggesting that Tesla might be preparing for a battery pack as large as, well, in terms of net, 109, so gross, maybe 115 or more in capacity when factoring in Tesla's battery reserve. Additionally, he discovered some new battery pack configurations with 108 cells per group running at 450 volts per pack that could very well be a universal design to replace the, let's face it, aging Model S and Model X battery pack while centralising the architecture for the Model 3 and upcoming Model Y. Now, this isn't a car that is even confirmed or even remotely on sale. It's simply someone that's been digging through code and sometimes that code can be put in there but never used. It can be old, it can be... It can be a red herring sometimes, but always worth paying attention because it could be a sign that a 400 mile plus Tesla Model S is on the way. Well, let's talk Lotus next. And whilst Teslas may be mighty quick, this next car fits into hypercar territory. The new assembly hall for the Lotus Evaya is next to the Lotus test track where each of the 130 Evias are going to be hand assembled and tested before delivery. Lotus says series production and the first customer deliveries begin this summer with the first year's production allocation of the £2 million hypercar already assigned. 
All of them they can make in the first 12 months. They've got names down for. Says the website, goodwood.com. Lotus says the Avaya employs its 2,000 horsepower motors to get 0-60 done in under three seconds. But that's not really what this car is about. It's more about going from 0-186 to miles an hour in under nine seconds. The top speed, well past 200 miles an hour. Well, a couple of battery stories next, and Bloomberg New Energy Finance's Colin McCarricker took to the stage at the Bloomberg NEF Summit in San Francisco last week, where he made a case for EVs reaching the end of the beginning. Think about that phrase, the end of the beginning. The case for EVs moving into the mainstream and out of the early adopter stage of growth has been fueled by the increase in energy density in the lithium-ion batteries that power our EVs and the corresponding drop in cost that comes along with it. Says Kyle Field for Clean Technica. As energy density increases, more energy can be extracted from a battery pack of the same weight. You see, battery energy densities keep getting better, said Colin, the head of advanced transport at Bloomberg NEF. He also said that they've tripled at the cell level since 2010. So any batteries are getting cheaper. They're also getting better, three times better in terms of energy density over the last decade. And let's talk about price as well. He also talked about how battery pricing has of lithium-ion batteries continued to fall in recent years. The trend will continue into 2020, showing no signs of hitting any sort of bottoming out. Bloomberg NEF estimates say the price drop from $156 per kilowatt hour to $135 per kilowatt hour sometime in 2020. You know, if you listen to various statements that Tesla have made, they say that they are heading towards $100 per kilowatt hour, and that is at what we call battery pack level. So at cell level, it's just to make a single small cell, and in Tesla's case, that's like a very big AA battery, but also at battery level. That means all of the things that go along with it, the associated ancillaries. might even include things like the inverter as well, but certainly all the things that they have to put into a fully assembled battery pack to keep it nice and warm, nice and cool, and functioning properly. And the second battery story is all about how recycling's getting better for EV batteries. American Manganese announced today the analysis results for an NCM product with a nickel cobalt manganese products which they've been disassembling electric vehicle battery packs and doing some recycling work according to the website lithium investing news the company's independent contract lab has generated recycled products of, with purities of the recycled product between 98.9 and 99.7 percent purity on recycled batteries. And I'll pop a link to the show notes if you want to read more about that. But just great news that another thing that the anti-EV brigade are all about, well, the batteries only last five minutes and five miles, and then you've got to throw the whole thing into landfill. Always good to keep an eye on how the recycling is getting better all the time. Well, a trio of Porsche stories is next, and we'll start with this, a new charging park. Porsche is expanding high-power charging in central Germany with the opening of a new charging park called the Porsche Turbo Charger. They do like that turbo word, don't they? Even though there's no turbos involved. Uh, the new turbo charging park has a total capacity of 7 megawatts. Of course, all drawn from renewable energy. It always is. Uh, says Electrive.com, the park in the German state of Saxony now sports 12 HPCs, high-powered chargers, operating at 350 kilowatts DC. Also has four fast-charging AC posts. Sorry, I say fast, I mean 22 kilowatt AC posts. Drivers who want to use the new Porsche charging park can reach the charging station at the customer centre at the Porsche Strasse near the Leipzig Norse Motorway. The official opening party of the charging park is going to be next Saturday, actually, eight days away from 10 in the morning. Any EV drivers of all brands are very welcome. They say cordially invited, free of charge to go along and have a look. Now, the next story is about a Motor Trend article. The all-electric, all-wheel drive Porsche Taycan Turbo S has just beaten any of their previously tested pure electric car quarter-mile distances and times by 0.04 seconds. It holds the new time and speed record for Motor Trend, at least in terms of fully, fully electric vehicles. The Car Enthusiast magazine states the previously held BEV, battery electric vehicle record, was the Model S P100D, 
the ludicrous plus one at 10.51 seconds and doing 125 miles an hour at the point of quarter mile the Tycon turbo went a bit faster and a little bit quicker doing 10.47 seconds not 10.51 and I'll put a link to inside EVs if you want to read more and the final Porsche story today Porsche is reportedly planning to roll out an enhanced battery pack for all three models, the Taycan Turbo, the Turbo S, and the 4S, says Tesla Arti. The news about Porsche Taycan's enhanced battery pack came amid a barrage of negative reports recently, many of which driven by the very low EPA range rating. Whether this new enhanced battery pack is a software enhancement or a hardware update, maybe they've had to go back to the drawing board and work out how to make a better battery, we don't know. But this development will hopefully for them reshape the negative narrative that is around the Porsche Taycan so far particularly in the Tesla circles as well when in December the EPA come back with a range of 201 miles which I'm not just talking Tesla the Audi lot the Jaguar fans the Tesla fans all going that's really bad and Porsche themselves doing independent testing to try and prove the EPA wrong Okay, there's still two more stories to go on the podcast today. Volkswagen and their partner association, aka the dealers, have just signed off and agreed a new deal and a new model for selling the all-electric ID family. The ID3 is coming first, but there'll be many more. This is specifically how they're sold in Germany, by the way. A format which is similar to the agency model for the big customers, which is already used over many years, are going to apply to customers individually buying the ID3 model models and the other ID cars as well. Following the go-ahead from their dealers, the retail partners as they call them, is this new agreement is going to come into effect from April. So what happens is, in their role as agents, the actual dealers who aren't Volkswagen, who have the big shiny buildings with all the cars inside, the dealers will make the arrangement for selling the ID cars to private customers. This relates to the acquisition of the car, any consultation with sales, organising a test drive, things like processing the transaction and handing the vehicle over. The customer's preferred dealer receives a commission and a bonus, which is identical to a showroom-based business, even if a customer goes online to VW's website and buys the ID3 and has nothing to do with the dealer, they will be assigned a preferred dealer and that dealer will be paid a bonus by VW. At the same time, the partner is no longer tasked with things like vehicle financing and the sales process is simplified because all of that goes away. There's no negotiating on price. There's no dealers doing nudge, nudge, wink, wink. I'll get you a special price better than that dealer down the road. The price is the price. The price on the VW website is the price you will pay. And the final story today, the maker of Britain's iconic black cabs. If you've ever had a holiday to the UK, ever seen a film about London, those iconic black taxi cabs as, as famous as New York's yellow cabs, I would say, the iconic black cabs are now turning electric with range extenders. And the company that makes them is looking to do more with the factory that makes them because they can't survive on just making black cabs alone. They're going to make a plug-in hybrid version of a van that sits on the same platform. Well, the van will travel 377 miles before you have to fill up with some fossils in a bid to win over long-distance delivery firms and companies that rely at the moment purely on diesel vans, says Bloomberg.com. The as-yet-unnamed one-ton van goes on sale this October based on the London Taxi, which was launched two years ago, and I've seen loads of them in London now. Yes, they're range extenders. No, they're not pure electric cars, and I get the criticism around that. The taxis go for 80 miles from their pretty small battery. There's a 1.5-litre range extender, and that never drives the wheels. It's purely a generator, like the BMW i3. So that charges the battery, the battery moves the wheels, and that does increase the range by five times. Zero emissions in the city for many journeys, but also, yes, you can drive the length and breadth of the country with the range extender. LEVC is the company that makes these black cabs and soon... The vans, don't worry, they won't have to be black as well. In fact, the black cabs don't have to be black anymore. Get them in any colour you want. Uh, owned by China's Geely. Yeah, 
them. Uh, they sold about 2,500 of the cabs last year, almost all of them in the UK, double that of 2018, still leaving a huge untapped capacity of the plant. They're made near a place called Coventry in central England, and that's capable of making 20,000 vehicles every single year. Hey, talking of Coventry, it's not a tenuous link, I, I promise. Coventry is the location of a big event called EVs in the Park. It's been going many, many years now. It is like a super meetup. Lots of local groups and EV groups have weekend meetups with 10, 20, 50, 100 cars even for the bigger ones. And that's fantastic. Now, the EVs in the Park event is open to anyone to go along. It is in Coventry. It is every single year, and it just gets bigger and bigger. The first one was almost in a car park with a handful of people turning up, and now it's just an amazing event. And if you would like to get your tickets for that, it doesn't cost anything, but you do need to register to tell the organisers, hey, I want to come along. EVs in the Park is happening this summer, Saturday the 18th of July. Starts at 9 o'clock in the morning, and once again, and if you've been before, the same old, same old, uh, you need to go onto the Eventbrite website and just say, yep, I'm coming, and you get sent your e-ticket. It's at the War Memorial Park in Coventry. I'm sure that they'll be, as it's the summertime, and Coventry is the place that they make the LEVC taxis and vans. It'd be great if there was a couple of those turning up, or even maybe the manufacturer wants to bring a couple down. I'd love to look around. If the van is on sale in October... This is July, the event. Maybe they'll bring one along. That'd be amazing. 18th of July this summer. You need one ticket per car, even if you're ride-sharing. Just means that you can get through the gate. Obviously, no vehicles are allowed in the park unless they are pure electric. Last year, 260-plus cars turned up. I had an amazing day, even though I was really injured. I'd, I'd, I'd either broken a rib or seriously damaged myself. I fell off a boat, long story, but still turned up. Just couldn't do many things. And it was a brilliant, brilliant event. And if you want to come along this year, free event, like I say, you'll meet so many fascinating, interesting people. And me. <laughs> I wouldn't always class myself in, in that description. Uh, we'll do EV News Daily Live. There'll be talks on stage. And you can come along if you go to... Uh, just search EVs in the park and you'll see it. Or you can go to eventbrite.co.uk and, uh, and you'll see it as well. See you there. Okay, right. Let's get on to question of the week this week. Are you happy to pay for extra add-on features after you've bought your car? EVs are connected cars. And that does open up the option of buying the car for a certain price, but then having apps, features, even the rear heated seats in the Teslas, which, if you haven't got it already because you've got the standard range plus, you can now have that activated for a few hundred dollars. What do you think about this connected car thing? Or would you rather just buy the car and that's the car you've paid for the features and that's what you've got? Let me know. Email hello at evnewsdaily.com or leave a comment on the YouTube show. There are 235 patrons of the podcast, and without you, I couldn't do this. And if you'd like to add your name to the list, no, honestly, no pressure at all. But if you have got a spare five, ten dollars or more every month, you can see the different levels on uh, Patreon. P a t r e o n dot com slash ev news daily. Seven hundred and three previous shows in the archive. If you're having trouble sleeping, just stick them on continuous. And if you can leave a review on Apple Podcasts, I'd really appreciate it. Helps me grow the show and reach more people and teach them about how great EVs are. Have a wonderful day. Catch you tomorrow. Oh, and do remember, there's no such thing as a self-charging hybrid.